Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I've got the printer running right beside here, and I don't have a, uh, a mic hooked up to me or anything like that, so hopefully you can hear the audio okay over the 3D printer sound. I'll have to invest in one of those little clip-on mics. I had one at one point, and um, I don't know what happened to it. I don't remember if it broke or if I just misplaced it or what exactly happened, but I'll have to get one of those in the future. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the RP9V2 and the progress that I've made since last time, which I'm very excited to show you. I've made a ton of progress, and we are definitely getting closer to having this printer um, back up and printing. So similar to the last video, I'm going to go ahead and take the camera and show you guys all the different things on the printer that I've done so far, and um, you know things that I've got and what's coming next. So let's go ahead and get into it now. Alright, so here is the printer um, basically right now in its current setup. Um, since last time, the main things that I have done is one, I took these um, these uh, lead screws and I cut them down to size, which um, was surprisingly not that difficult. I basically posted on Reddit under the 3D printing section if anyone had any suggestions on how to cut these lead screws down to size, and somebody answered me, and I can't remember his name, which makes me feel bad, um, but he posted a picture of like a Dremel wheel that can cut metal, and I went to Home Depot to look for it, they didn't have it, so I ended up picking up a different... Um, different wheel that I've already used before and that ended up working pretty beautifully. Um, it did destroy one wheel but I was able to get both of the lead screws cut so they are cut down to size um, which you can see they're just a little bit above the top right here which is fine. Um, I basically plan on putting a uh, 60, 602 or 608 um, basically a skateboard bearing yeah but basically this is going to be on the top um, kind of over the threaded rod or the lead screw and it'll go down a little bit more um, but it'll attach to right here and kind of hold it in place um, not that it's really that necessary but just to give it a little bit more uh, security from the top I also went ahead and um, I had to order these on um, I'll place a link in the description to both where I got the bloated screws and the couplers but I ended up getting both of them on Amazon this one basically just goes from the uh, three millimeters that is required for the uh, stepper motor down here up to the eight millimeters which is required for the lead screw so um, obviously the older ones that uh, these guys right here um, I couldn't use these because the the uh, you know the hole the diameter is just not nearly big enough since it's intended to be used with these and not with these and as you can see hopefully here oh well, it doesn't look it because this one's further forward but it's significantly bigger the uh, the diameter of the lead screws versus the threaded rods um, so other than that I basically got to the point where you know it was time to look at the x-axis and what I was going to do because one of the things I wanted to do was get rid of the Bowden setup and go to direct drive because that is my preferred method of extrusion by far um, and I was hoping I'd be able to recycle some other um, you know file that had been created out there or some other extruder and x-carriage but nothing really was what I wanted and the ones that were what I wanted the file format that had been uploaded to Thingiverse was not for 360 Fusion um, which was frustrating so I essentially am starting from square one and set out to design an X carriage which um, I've done so far is you know basically design this here and it's got two sections um, on one side it's got a spot for two LMAU bearings and the other side it's got a section for one and then I created holes and little notches so that way you can zip tie them in place um, after that before I continued on I went ahead and 3d printed them to just do a test fit and by some miracle they actually fitted like fit perfectly fine so um, the next step that I'm going to be doing is moving on to adding a belt to the X carriage so that way I can move it back and forth and then go into the direct drive setup um, now, originally I was going to try to design my whole own direct drive setup, but I have the GTEC uh, G2S Pro, which is a uh, Delta style printer with a dual extruder that has two direct drive setups already on the top of them that basically lead to the Bowden tubes. Well, I'm not going to use dual extrusion on this Delta printer when I finally get it up and going. I'm just going to use a single extruder, so I figured I might as well just recycle the parts from that so that's basically where I'm at right now um, 
I'm going to see if I can somehow um, mount the uh, E3D Light 6 onto the X carriage along with a proximity sensor and then also create some kind of mounting mechanism where I can put a stepper motor and the direct drive gear on there. So I've still got a ways to go as you can tell but honestly if if I you know sit down and focus on it I'm hoping that within the next week here I can at least have this thing up and printing um, at least test printing you know and doing some calibrations and stuff like that so hopefully you guys are excited um, please let me know in the comments down below what you guys think if you've got any ideas and all that good stuff and um, if you're not subscribed don't forget to subscribe and smack the like button it really helps me out I really appreciate it it's nice seeing feedback on you know my work and projects and on that note I will see you guys in my next video once again this is Dana from Modbot and I am out peace guys